Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 2 of Europa Universalis 4 as Ming with the Mandate of Heaven DLC. Depending on what time of the day you are watching this, this DLC will be out later on today on the uh, Thursday the 6th of April. So it's usually about 3 or 4 p.m. Central uh, European time. Not 100% sure on the exact time it launches, but that's usually uh, around about when uh, these games launch. So can we actually march over there? Looks like we can. Also, it looks like whatever it is is currently uh, occupied anyway. But I think we've got... No, that does look like it is part of Corchin. I mean, their, their name goes over it, so it must be part of their land. We're still trying to take their capital. That's taking a little bit of time. You're going to arrive on the 6th of February. That is a, that is a long, old march to get there. So, yeah, you've got it sieged out, which is a little bit unfortunate. We finally managed to convert the heretics to the one and only true faith. It's decreased our harmony by three. So, we could carry on and do some more uh, conversions. Because our harmony is going up, so we're kind of keeping it balanced right now. I want to at least take their capital so we can sort of take as much as possible. I was hoping this other war would sort of end inconclusively and then we'd be able to go off and grab the rest of those provinces. Looks like that's the only other province they have though and there's no fort there so it's not really worth anything. Let's go ahead and just um, mothball our forts. We might as well because at this point there's no hostile armies that we currently need to worry about. Come on now, we've got a 35% chance to get it on this siege tick. And we failed, because of course we do. Uh, let's go ahead and put you down there. We'll throw some more manpower at the problem. So I guess we kind of want to work out who we're going to go and attack. I mean, ideally, Mongolia and Oirat. They're going to be our biggest sort of uh, problems here. We've got the siege done. Fantastic. So let's group you together. So there's only one province we don't have control of, but that is fine. So we'll sue for peace. We've got 99% war score as is. Still couldn't make them a vassal. Um, because it would require 114% war score anyway. So is that literally all we can do? Is we can get war reparations. Get them to end their rivalries and cede provinces. I mean, we could take some land from them we don't want to go too crazy with the aggressive expansion but yeah I think that's a good amount and we'll take a load of money from them as well not that we need the money but there we go that's our first war we've taken a bit of land uh, we need to do some coring of course so let's get working on that let's go ahead and get all of our men together we need to stand around in these provinces just to make sure that we don't have any issues with um, rebellions. So while we're waiting for some stuff to happen, uh, let's go and have a look at our tech. So we want to tech up as soon as possible. Uh, we're not making uh, 189. There we go, 22. I was going to say it's just because of the uh, the war, not the war reps, the, the money that we took. So we could always get some better guys here. The yearly prestige could be useful. Get a plus two admin guy. I mean, why not? We can afford to get them, right? So we might as well. And diplomatic reputation. So let's just go ahead and get the level two advisors for now. So we've got lots of people declaring war upon each other. Corchin's now getting completely um, sieged out because they've got no armies. But that's fine. Now then, Oirat. How big are Oirat? How um, big is your army? Oh, they've allowed, you can actually pick war enemies and allies and rivals and stuff and people with negative opinion. This is nice that they've added this stuff on here. Well done. Well done indeed. Um, Oirat. Oirat have um, only 11,000 men, really. And I guess in Mongolia don't have that many. 9,000. Wow, Oirat. Uh pretty easy target here um you don't have any allies we could declare war on you and force you to be a tributary wow do we really want to make them into a tributary or do we just want to try and start 
eating land from them, though. I think we just go ahead and start building a spy network, to be honest. Uh, who are we working on here? It's one of our vassals. Uh, local nobles are not satisfied with their granted privileges. They demand more rights and are willing to back this up with a rebellion against the emperor. 29 noble regiments in Beijing. Or we can give... Right, I don't know these estate names. I'm going to have to check them out. So the... Uh, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong because letters in Chinese are pronounced differently to how they are in um, the Western world. So my apologies for that. Um, but... Um, Kinwangs is the nobles. Uh, the Shangbang is the burghers. And the Shizu is the, uh, the the clergy, essentially. So this is giving the nobles more loyalty. It reduces local tax modifier, which we don't really want. Or we can lose a stability. Um, Beijing is there. We already have quite a lot of... Do you know what? We could probably do this. If we go ahead and just move... Um, that stack on there so we have the right numbers and we'll go ahead and give you the leader which is our heir so let's go ahead and do that and then sure let's let them pop and they're only the rebels so that we should be able to take them out without too much of a problem oh that's going to be close there we go we did actually win it was close but we won that's all that matters um, people are willing to hire Condottieri. We've got provincial unrest, which we know about. Corruption is growing, but that's because we have uh, overextension, so we should be getting rid of that soon. So do we want to go ahead and work on fabricating claims on Mongolia? I mean, I would like to just tech up. The question is, who, who do you attack and who do you just tributize? You want to try and unify uh, China. Can't do one of these yet. How is our uh, authority going up to? It's getting there. And I guess we can do these in pretty much any order. Uh, the favour of Kizen. Our uh, court officials are worried that Kizen is being unduly influenced by his consort. As members of prominent families of the realm, they all have an interest in the power that comes with being near his imperial majesty. Kinzen himself, however, sees no risk in this. It is merely natural that everyone seek the favour of the Emperor. Gain um, five mandate. Excellent. Now, apparently, we are the current Emperor of China, but other people can become the Emperor, as far as I'm aware. That's how I think it um, works. Uh, permanent claims on China... CB to unite China, can enforce tributary on neighbours. So yeah, we do have these these options on some people at least. But who to attack? So we've got a lot of lot of neighbouring tributaries. We definitely want to do something to Oirat though. Uh, it looks like Korchin has become a little smaller than they were. Fortunately, we don't quite have a border over here yet uh, let's go ahead and bring you back and we'll go ahead and start um oh we can't build directly on you because you are a, a, a subject of oira of course i always forget about that but that's fine how's japan doing looks like there's a few wars and things going on over there so i know some of the changes that they've done in uh japan is they've changed the way that the uh, daimyos and the shogun work so the shogun now is basically whoever controls kyoto and the Shogun can actually get Daimyo's to um, commit seppuku. He can basically get the uh, Daimyo's leaders to commit suicide. And um, they, he gains a little bit of um, monarch points for doing that. So that's quite a cool thing. So it's kind of like the sacrifices with the, uh, the Aztecs. Our subjects have taken to telling tales and legends about Dizu. The legend says that in Ming's darkest hour, he will return to our nation and deliver it from evil. Regardless of the truth in that statement, we could use this in our propaganda. So we get plus one yearly prestige for 20 years for 79 ducats and 10 admin power. Well, the ducats is not a problem. Or we could lose five prestige. Well, fine, we'll lose 10 admin power and gain 
what is essentially t 10... We're not bothered about the money. So that was 10 admin power for 20 prestige over 20 years. It's not great, but it's not too terrible either. There we go. We've got Rebel Uprising, Ye Separatists, which we knew something like this was going to happen at some point. You're taking uh, attrition there. Let's go ahead and put um, you in charge because... In fact, what have you actually got there? You've got some sort of ability. Reinforce speed. Nice. You're a battlefield medic. This province is still... You're still over the supply weight. Uh, where is this one going to pop? Independence for Yi. Ah, this isn't even here, is it? This is um, the potential split. Uh, Guiyang. So I'm, I'm not going to know where any of these places are. So we're, we're all the way down here, essentially. So let's go ahead and start moving you into position. Uh, how many rebels are we looking at? You separatists. I always lose where the the thing is. There used to be somewhere that would tell you the the number that you are likely to get. And now for some reason I'm not able to see it. But we'll march an army down there. We'll actually go ahead and give you the leader because we've got the maneuver to get down there more quickly. And we'll just back you into a province that has... You're all actually having some issues with supply limit here, aren't you? So let's go ahead and just split a couple of you up. Just try and avoid taking unnecessary attrition. So we've still got nothing we can build other than castles right now. So any extra buttons added down here? Oh, we've got a diplomacy button. Now, now this is new. This is something that I hadn't found before. So choose the type of target for our diplomats to automatically start improving relations with. So, excellent. So we can actually say to our free diplomats, go and do something. So, our subject countries, we can assign one diplomat to be improving with them. And we can also try and suck up to neighbouring countries. Interesting. Uh, alliance actions. Six countries would probably accept an alliance. Influence actions. This is really good. So, I can see, at a glance... That there are 56 countries that I could proclaim guarantees for. There are four more countries that would probably accept tributary status. Got no free diplomats at the moment, but we can see the ones that we could do. We could get... There's 22 people that would accept a royal marriage. This is actually a really cool thing. I like that. That's a nice little addition. Very, very good um, addition to the interface there. So these um, diplomats are now going to go off and automatically improve relations with people without me having to mess around and tell them to do it. That is fantastic. I really, really like that. Well, let's deal with our rebellions first. I'm going to say, let's get another stack down here, just in case. And then our next war is probably going to be with Oirat. There we go, it has popped. Uh, that was quite a nasty stack. We should be able to deal with them, and indeed we did. And we should be able to get over here quickly enough to stop them getting that siege. Uh, we finally managed to convert. Okay, so there's another conversion done. There we go. That is all the rebels dealt with. Nice. Lost a little bit of manpower again. So our harmony has dropped slightly. Uh, there's still a few of these that we can get. So let's go and work on that. Malacca's opinion of us is changing quite a lot. The Sultan of, Sultan of the Malaccan. So again, there's definitely uh, uh, an issue here with how that's working. Uh, he's decided to keep harboring a number of well-known pirates. So yeah, it seems like they're using the wrong, um, the wrong term. So their opinion of us has changed. So we're nearly able to get ourselves um, a military tech. 
No institutions penalty for us so far. We have embraced feudalism. The Renaissance hasn't happened yet. Uh, still going to cost us quite a bit. It'll take a little while to get there, but at least we'll have uh, some extra land morale and tactics. What we could do with is the better supply limit, which we don't get until level 5. So we will have to wait a bit on that one. I'm kind of tempted to boost up my stability, but I really want to try and get my tech up. So I'm kind of waiting on that one. So... There are a few more rebellions. Corchian separatists might fire, but we've got a few guys up here. Um, let's go ahead and... Right, that's the Mongolian border. Let's move you up in that direction. Let's bring another one of these armies down. We'll merge you together. And I know I've only just sort of marched you down here, but let's get you back up so we can deal with the uh, Oirat when it becomes becomes time to do that so constantly getting uh, cbs with these guys right well we can go ahead now and fabricate a claim um ax uh alxa and Izum. well alxa is probably the first one to get so we could go ahead and declare a war on them now if we wanted to and indeed we shall do you have any allies you do not. You do have a royal marriage, and you are in another war, which makes life a little bit easier for us. Um, we'll lose a little bit of the prestige, get some power points. Let's group you together and move you on to this side of things. Let's go ahead and just turn on the forts while we prepare for war. And we just had a random rebellion pop there, which is great, because we were standing on that province when it happened. Don't know what all that was about, to be fair. Uh, we're still making a decent amount of money, so do you know what? Let's go ahead and just put a little bit more money into rooting out corruption, just so we can get rid of it all that more quickly. And I'm going to go in and try and dive on Mongolia and Oirat as quickly as possible, I think. You will have the leader. And, um, yeah, it might be time to start this. So let's go ahead and bring back you. So bring that diplomat back. And we'll have a few armies that are all sort of close by one another. Let's take you north a little bit, just so that we can go and um, get involved when we need to. Uh, we can still have quite a, a large um, army going on here. Let's just start by getting ourselves um, a single regiment there. And then what I'll do is I'll just basically build up on top of it when it's done. So let's go ahead and declare our war. Uh, we want we could force them as a tributary, but we, we're all about taking land here. So we'll go ahead and declare the war on you. Let's start marching in. That's the war goal. We'll move in with you there. And we'll start working our way in from this side on Mongolia. I don't know where their troops are. Like I said, they are involved in another war. Um, there are our um, cores getting done, which is nice. Let's just go ahead and detach a siege and just move you up into this province here. So we've got another rebel uprising. Korchin separatists, which are going to pop over on this side somewhere. Um, there's several different provinces that they could pop in. Any of these provinces actually have... Uh, this has a supply limit of 16. So let's get everybody in there. Just in case. They will pop at some point, but we'll have a couple of armies around that can deal with them if and when they do. I mean, we are expecting it, so that's fine. So we're starting to siege stuff out. That is excellent. Let's um, get you up here. We might just drop off a couple of one stacks and just go sort of straight for Mongolia's capital there. In fact, um, let's get you up here. Definitely getting stuff done. You can move up to there. Right, let's, uh, let's detach a siege with you and get you moved up to there.
And you are going to detach a siege and you're going to move over here. And you're going to detach a siege and you're going to move down to there. There we go. Won't take as long to grab all of this land, really. You're already on the march. You're just moving really slowly. You keep working your way up that side. Not sure where all of their armies have gone. And uh, let's just go and march on their capital. You can go up there. Uh, you're going there, actually. So, yeah, you just carry on. Carry on with that. As soon as you guys are done, I think we'll actually back out a little bit to help with the possible rebellion. So, let's move you guys down into here. We can take your technology, so we might as well go ahead and do that. We can take our military tech. That will make us stronger. So let's do that. Now you... You guys all belong together, so let's do that. You can move up there. Yeah, we've almost got Mongolia completely sieged. Right, let's get in on your capital if we can. I know you're at war with these guys. I'm a little bit worried that they might try and jump in and grab it if I don't get there fast. You have got somebody on it. Now, are you sieging it? Or are you just standing there? No, we are actually sieging it. That is good. So it shouldn't take as long to get the war score that we need. Right, now then, you guys, we need to get you somewhere where you're not going to be over the supply limit. So we'll go ahead and put you on top of the fort. That is fine. Stop derping around with the camera. So yeah, you've only got a few provinces left. And those are provinces that we can deal with. But the oil rat stuff goes all the way over here as well, but some of it is being sieged out. So we'll start taking some land from them. Let's we'll see how much we can blob out as China. Do we actually ever get a decision to form China? We've got to construct the Forbidden City. Which we really should do. Statesman advisor with a skill level of three. Or a ruler with an admin level of three. And stability at least three. I mean we could and you have to have fifty admin power. I mean we could probably bump up to three stability. That's probably not that much of an issue. In fact, I'm very tempted. I know obviously we want to get tech. And getting the temples is nice actually. I think we'll wait. Because we've got so much money, we could buy so many temples. So I think we'll reach Admin Tech 4 first. We'll get as many tem temples as we can. And then we'll consider spending and getting our um, stability up. Ah, finally, we have seen the Oirat army. They've got a good general, apparently. Let's go and start moving forwards with you. Because I don't know where they intend to move in and what they intend to do. But in the meantime, we, we've got this other army up here as well. So we've got quite a few units around. And they are still in another war. So they are currently at war with... Are they at war with Changati, actually? Yeah, Changati. So they're actually sieging out down here. So they're probably mostly going to leave me alone. There's no guarantees on that. Okay, we've now got um, Mongolia fully sieged. Uh, is there... I guess... Oh, even the fort can't sustain you. I guess we can get you down there and say just trying to avoid taking too much attrition and we'll just grab up the rest of these provinces that we can and we could try and take something from Mongolia as well we don't have any claims there but it's not a terrible idea however what is a terrible idea is running massively over my time limit so I'm going to end the video here thanks a lot for watching guys hope you are still enjoying EU4 I'll see you on the next video and until then Goodbye for now.